Hello, my name is Gabriele Kerber and I welcome you to a new episode of Emotion Ocean Talks. Today's Ocean Talk hero is in Latin called Millstone, actually Millstone Millstone. In German and Spanish we call it or him the moonfish, in English sunfish. So all the objects the fish is named after are round and so is the fish. I'm obviously talking about the Mola Mola or ocean sunfish. The Mola Mola is the biggest and heaviest bony fish alive. It can be up to three meters long and weigh two tons, although most individuals are much smaller than that. Despite its size, the Mola Mola was for a long time considered to be planktonic. What does planktonic mean? It means that the organism is not capable of moving independent of currents so that the fish in this case need the ocean currents for its transport and cannot move out or against the currents. So like jellyfish or single-cellular algae. But in case of the molar molar, this proved to be wrong. Recent research where molar molars were tracked by different methods like GPS revealed that the fish is in constant movement with a speed of one and a half to two and a half kilometers per hour. So that is one mile per hour or more. It doesn't sound like much, but it is actually comparable to the speed with which other big bony fish like marlins or salmons and even pelagic sharks swim. Like those fish, the Mola Mola travels between oceans and it inhabits subtropical and moderate pelagic waters worldwide. So they are swimming for long distance and there was some research which showed that they swim in average 27 kilometers per day, even when they are close to the shore. It might be more when they are further out in the open water. This proves that the Mola Mola is a very efficient long distance swimmer, which is absolutely not dependent on ocean currents for its movement. Then, where did the notion come from that the Mola Mola is a planktonic fish? In order to answer that, we have to have a look at the structure of the fish and of its fins. Other known fish swim by using either the pelvic fins or the tail fin for propulsion or by undulating movements of the complete body. But looking at the molar molar, the pelvic fins are way too small to move the big fish and the tail fin basically doesn't exist. Undulating movement doesn't work either, not least due to a very thick rubber-like skin. And a fish that can't use any of the known methods to swim, can't actively swim, right? When we observe the swimming molar molar, we see that it moves its dorsal and anal fin symmetrically and that both fins have the same size. When we turn this picture to the side, it looks like a penguin which flies through the water or a bird which flies through the air. So mola molas fly through the water like birds through the air and they use their dorsal and the anal fin, well actually like this, um, like wings, move them synchronous. But birds with their wings are built bilaterally symmetric, so they have the same size of wings on both sides of the body and they have the same kind and size of muscles in order to move the wings. The dorsal and anal fin of fish are not made in order to move with the same strengths, the same sized fins. So the molar molar needed a secondary adjustment of the muscles in the body in order to be able to fly. So when we look at the muscles of a molar molar, we see that we have here in the upper part of the body, close to the back and thus to the dorsal fin, a part of muscle which is now in the today's molar molars used to move the dorsal fin. We have a totally differently shaped 
muscle of different origin which moves the anal fin. But when we look at those two packs of muscles, they have the same size and the same strength. So, so they can put the same force on both fins, which have the same area, the same size. So actually, due to this development, this adaptation of the molar molar, although the muscles are not originally symmetric, functionally they are. The sunfish does not only swim actively long distances, but it also dives deep down, far underneath the thermocline, especially during the day hours, and then it comes up again. The longer it spends time in the depth, the longer it will spend time close to the surface again, suggesting that the thermoregulation of the fish is actually by location in the warmer upper water layers. And thermoregulation might also be the reason why the molar molar can be quite often seen basking in the sun, lying on its side at the surface of the water. The other reason to come up close to the surface, especially in the vicinity of reefs is a spa treatment. The mola mola allows banner fish or other cleaner fish to eat parasites and dead skin of their bodies. Mola mola themselves eat jellyfish almost exclusively. And due to their huge bodies, they are rarely eaten by others. So as this individual here proves they are attacked by sharks and orcas which sometimes kill the whole fish and sometimes just take a bite out of it. But where other fish would have a big problem with having lost half their tail, the mola mola, due to its very specific way of swimming, does not seem to mind.